Hi, this is Kitty. I'm coming to you today with a card tutorial and a newfound respect for my card making idols. Making a YouTube tutorial is not easy, but I am bound to determine to figure it out. So for today's card, I wanted to show you what I'm calling a modified herringbone pattern. I've done herringbone cards before and have discovered that there are a lot of different small changes you can make to get a different look. And it's very flexible, so I've been playing around and thought I'd show you what I came up with. I'm starting with an old card kit from Simon Says Stamp from November 2013. I had some bits and pieces of paper and stuff left over from it and I thought I'd use it up. This technique is wonderful for using up your old scraps. You can use any kind of pattern paper you want. My only suggestion would be that smaller patterns look better, so sometimes the 6x6 papers work better than the 12x12, but you can do it with all sorts of different paper. So for this card, I uh, pulled out some of the leftover paper from this kit, some 6x6 pattern papers, and a piece of red cardstock. I started with the cardstock and I cut it into approximately 1 8 inch strips. It's not that important that they're exactly an 8 inch, in fact you can make them any thickness you want, but it does help to make them as straight as possible because if they are bent or anything or long, thicker on one end, then your design's going to turn out a little wonky. Um, I use my guillotine cutter for this and it works really well, it's just a little bit hard to measure sometimes. In fact, when I put these all up together, I decided one of them looked just a little bit too skinny, so I just pulled it out and didn't use that one. Now the pattern paper, I cut those into one quarter inch strips. And again, they don't have to be exact. And in fact, I've done this design with quarter and half inch strips mixed or all half inch. This card, I just wanted to try it with all quarter inch. But there are lots of variables and I completely encourage you to experiment and see what you can come up with. Okay, I started with a piece of old cheap cardstock cut to about five and a quarter by four. I'm using cheap cardstock for this part because it's going to be completely covered up and you won't see it anyway. But I did intentionally choose a piece that's red and a fairly close match to the good cardstock I'm using because if I make a mistake or it's off a little bit and there are any gaps in my pattern, it won't be very noticeable. It'll just kind of blend in and you probably won't, won't even be able to see it. So just one of those little tricks. Anyway, for this card, you want to completely cover the top with adhesive. You can use any kind of tape adhesive, but I wouldn't recommend a uh, liquid because it could dry before you're finished and you need it to stay sticky for a long time. Now, you, I have used my ATG gun. Uh, it just takes a lot of stripes back and forth to get it completely covered. The easiest way to do this is if you have a Xyron. So I'm going to run this through my Xyron 510 and get a nice even cover of tape adhesive over the whole piece of paper. So we're going to take off uh, the plastic cover sheet here and we'll take the backing off and we should have a nice piece of cheap cardstock that's completely covered with tape adhesive. We want it to be sticky all over because we're going to work on it for quite a while. I'm now going to start with one of my skinny little pieces of cardstock and um, I want to put it roughly in the middle at an angle, doesn't have to be exact, but I do want to keep that piece as straight as possible. If it gets bent, then uh, it could uh, kind of mess up your design. And if you get one piece wrong, then all the other pieces are going to follow suit and you're going to be crooked all the way through. So you do want to keep it kind of straight. You could use a ruler, but honestly, I think that you can do it without one, and I don't usually use one. so. And that's the other reason for using that red cardstock on the back, because if it does come off a little bit, it's not going to be very noticeable. So I've taken a second piece of the cardstock and cut it in half because I didn't need a very long piece. I am going to line it up to that first piece. I want to make sure that I'm using a good end with a good, solid, straight cut. 
I, it doesn't matter where along that line I put this, but it needs to be as close to a 90 degree angle as possible. Again, so that the rest of my design continues to stay straight all the way through. So I'm making sure I have a good edge there, and I'm going to line it up wherever I want, not quite in the middle, I want it off a little bit, but you could put it in the middle, you just get a different look. Um, you'll notice my hands go off camera a couple of times and that's because I am moving little pieces of paper back to my guillotine cutter to make sure I get a nice straight 90 degree angle on the edge of the paper before I put it down. I found that the guillotine cutter is the best way. If I use my scissors and just eyeball it, it's hard to get it exact. So no thinking with the guillotine cover. Okay, now I've placed my second piece on the other side, not in the same location, um, but you can put it wherever you'd like. It's straight. I now have the card broken up into four little sections, and I'm going to work on each second section separately. Now I'm moving on to my pattern paper. Uh, you can use any pattern that you'd like in any order that you'd like. I am lining this first piece up as close as I can along the edge of that one thin strip of cardstock. Again, I want that one also at a 90 degree angle, and as long as it's nestled up to that cardstock, it should be where it should be. I'm going to take another strip of the same pattern paper and line it up and cozy it up next to that other strip of cardstock. I now have my first piece laid down. Now this is where I wanted to talk about modifications to the herringbone. I've done a lot of different things in order to make the pattern paper kind of gel or have a cohesive look. One thing I've done is ink the edges of each one of those individual strips. If you ink them all with the same color ink, then it gives each one of those patterns something in common and they look better together than they might otherwise. Another option is to sand the edges of all those pieces and then all of them are sort of white and they all match each other. But I'm going to try something different on this card. Instead of trying to make the edges match up, I am going to use tiny strips of cardstock in between every single layer of pattern paper. So I'm going to go pattern, skinny cardstock, pattern, skinny cardstock, all the way through, and that should give it a cohesive look because the cardstock's all the same color, even though my patterns are wildly different in color and in pattern. Another tip is to always start in the same direction. So you'll notice that I always put down that horizontal piece first and then I put down this vertical piece. That just gives it a more uh, cohesive look all the way through. I'm using that word way too much, aren't I? Anyway, uh, you want to settle each piece as close as you can to the piece before it and that will help you keep everything straight. No measuring, you just uh, line them up. And now, uh, the rest of the card it takes a little while, but it's pretty easy. So I'm going to speed up the video a little bit so I don't bore you to tears while, while I put down all the other strips. Just notice that I'm going pattern, then cardstock, then pattern, then cardstock. Okay, when you get to an end of a quadrant like this, you might have a really, really tiny little piece there. Just do the best you can. Uh, sometimes I have to add a little bit of adhesive because it doesn't always go to the very edge of the paper, especially if I use something other than a Xyron. Um, the other option is to make this card a little bit bigger than I did, and it will allow you some room to cut off the ends if they don't come out perfect. In fact, I'll be trimming this one down just a smidge in order to make sure I get a clean edge. And now we move on to the second quadrant. 
We'll do this section just like we did the other and then follow up with the other two. So we start with one horizontal piece right there and then the same pattern I will use, um, I will put at a 90 degree angle to that one and so on and so on. Okay, now that my piece is done, I need to cut off the excess. I see a couple spots on the edges where some of that cheap cardstock might be showing through. I'll just make sure that when I trim this down that I trim off enough to get rid of that little piece. So, the best way I have found to trim this off is to turn it over and to start with a short side use my scissors and as best I can run along that one side with the scissors right up to the edge of the cheap cardstock. Once I've got that all cut off I am going to move to my guillotine cutter to cut the other three sides and then probably recut that one side. I get a much straighter edge that way than I can get with my scissors. Now a really long pair of scissors might also accomplish that or a razor blade and a ruler, however, whatever works best for you. But I'm going to take this to my cutter and clean it up. Okay, here's my finished pattern. I've cleaned it up and I trimmed off a bit on that one edge I didn't like. Um, my finished piece ended up about 5 and 1 8 inch by 3 and 7 8 inch. Um, it's pretty flexible, but you do want it to look good on your card. It just depends on how much of a mat you want, or if you even want a mat at all. But I do recommend at least a small border, and I'll show you here in a minute why. Okay, I am going to mat this on the same color cardstock that I use for those thin strips between the pattern paper. I find that this really helps pull it all together and gives it a much more finished look. So, now I know that uh, most of the card makers who do videos would have this piece all cut out ready to go so that I just had to glue it on, but that's not usually how I do it. So here you're seeing my little cheat. I just put adhesive on the back of this piece and I put it onto my mat, uh, making sure that there is plenty of paper on the edges for whatever border I might want to put. And next, I'm going to cheat and use this wonderful little tool called Perfect Layers. So I'm pulling out my cutting board, and I'm getting my Perfect Layers ruler out. And with my handy craft knife, I am going to put on a very thin little 16th inch border around the whole edge. You can make the border any size you'd like. In this case, I just wanted a really thin one. Just the tiniest bit of red cardstock will help pull the design together. Okay, for my card base, I got out a piece of rustic cream paper tray cardstock. I've cut it to eight and a half by five and a half and scored it in the middle for a standard A2 size card. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this my pattern directly to my card base. I could use a dimensional adhesive, but I'm going to put some other elements on here, so I'm going to leave it just like that. 
So I'm going to get out my trusty ATG gun, put some adhesive on here, and put it all together. At this point, the card is pretty much done. The rest is up to you. You can put a sentiment on it or you can add some other little things. I am going to add a couple elements here. Okay, at this point, you could do anything you wanted with this card. The design itself is very flexible and you could turn it into anything. I decided to go with a birthday card, so I stamped out a happy birthday sentiment on a piece of matching cardstock. Just cut little fishtail ends off there and I'm going to adhere that with some foam adhesive in just a moment. I felt like the card needed something else, so I die cut a lacy circle there, and I'm going to put a stamped image on there. I decided to go for a cute little puppy, so I stamped him out several times, colored him with my Prismacolor pencils, and I cut one of them out already. I, this came from a Simon Says Stamp collection, Circle Friends, very cute little critters there. Anyway, I figured that you didn't want to spend an hour watching me color, so. But I will tell you that I highlighted his eyes and nose with a Sakura glaze pen to make them stand out a bit more. But I also wanted to give the dog some more dimension, so first I'm going to take that first piece and using a brush tip marker I'm going to color all the way around the edge to give it some definition. You'll notice that I'm holding it in such a way that I'm coming from the back of the image. I found that even if my pen or hand slips it just marks the back and not the front. So this seems to work pretty well. It's not as hard as it looks. And I get a nice dark edge. It also helps if your fussy cutting is less than perfect and you get it it looks like it's perfect when you're done. So I'm going to finish uh, getting every little edge here, um, but I wanted my dog to have a little more dimension. So I'm going to take another one of those same images that's colored pretty much the same way. I'm also going to fussy cut it out, only this time I'm just going to use the head of the dog. So I'm going to trim that out and then run my pen around that piece as well. Okay, I've got my little dog pieces here ready to go. I'm just going to grab some foam and I will be right back. So for the dog's body, I'm just using some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. It's just what I happen to have handy. And I'm going to use my tweezer bees and place that little dog on my lacy circle where I want him. Now for the head, I want to give him some dimension, so I'm going to put some foam adhesive on the back of the dog's head so that it pops up a little bit. So I'll just take the backing here off of my sticky foam, and I'll pull out my tweezer bees again and line that doggy head up right over the top of the other one. It just gives him a subtle little bit of dimension, makes him pop out just a little bit. I also felt like this needed just a little bit something more, so I took a heart that I had already die cut out. I used the same card stock from the base of the card so it matches, and I am going to add that to my little lacy circle die cut. To adhere that lacy circle with the dog, um, I'm going to use some more foam. This time I actually die cut a circle out of red foam so it would kind of blend in and not be noticeable from the side. And I cut it just a little bit smaller than the lacy circle because I want those holes to show through. But this way it gives pretty good coverage and that circle shouldn't get too squished in the mail. 
For this, I just use my ATG gun. I'm going to put some adhesive on both sides and attach this to my card. And then after I get my lacy circle on, I'll use some more red foam that already has some adhesive on it, and I will put my sentiment on the card as well. Okay, this is the finished card. I added a little glossy accents to the heart and a couple of dots with a white gel pen. This design's really flexible, so you can do all sorts of things with it. If you decide to give it a try, I would love to see. Anyway, if you're still here, uh, thanks for sticking it out through my first card tutorial. Hopefully not my last. If you liked it, I would love it if you hit like or left me a comment. Thanks so much for watching, and have a magical day.